for now, should we just jump straight in and talk about uh, why I asked you to record this supplement on philosophy, education and mental health and what your kind of what your way into it is? Yeah, well, I presume that you asked me uh, partly because of my work and part of, partly because of my personal profile. Um, yeah, so I came to the whole uh, to topic of mental health and how that works, I guess, connects with creativity, um, both personally, obviously, just uh, being someone who suffered various mental health um, issues and had um, family with mental health issues, but also at a very different and not necessarily entirely connected way, although I can see that obviously that does influence what you're interested in. Um, when doing my PhD and doing a lot of work on Gilles Deleuze, who wrote with Felix Guattari, who is a psychiatrist, this book, Antioedipus, which is the um, key text of the 60s uh, sort of anti-psychiatry movement, I guess, yeah. to a certain extent. Um, them, and, them and Foucault, they're often the ones that kind of get mentioned in the same breath when the yeah, anti-psychiatry so movement comes up, right? Yeah, so wrote the preface for this. Yeah. Yep, they were batting on the same team yeah. at that time. Um, and I guess, on one hand, I found their stuff really, really interesting. And basically, in that book, as well as in a lot of other work that they've written together, um, very shortly, they take the schizophrenic or schizophrenia as a kind of model for pure creativity, mm. um, which they... I mean, there's no other way really of saying it, but they, they sort of idolize this. Yeah. Um, that it's, that schizophrenia somehow is a model of creativity that's completely free from the, like the organization or the uh, ideology of capitalism. Um, and I've always, you know, it, the way they write is very powerful. It's very creative in itself. It, it, it's a difficult text, but it's not, it's not really a, a normal sort of philosophical text. Yeah. Uh, it's almost like a philosophy and, uh beat poetry <laughs> it's worth combo. saying it's, it's worth saying for the for the students that, that yeah that it's not um academics refer to them often and they are well known in academic circles but they don't write in the way that most people would think of academic writing do they and they're quite no and like, philosophical punks yeah absolutely and it's not a particularly accessible text either uh, no. so i don't particularly actually recommend anyone go to go out and read it unless you're very very interested um but i sort of initially i was really taken by this uh, and i guess the idea is that um if you suffer from psychosis i guess the you know there's a difference between neurosis and psychosis which is i mean very very simplistically taken is that um if you're neurotic, you're kind of misinterpreting or overly um, inter or overly interpreting reality, but you're still somehow ha you're in touch with reality. Whereas psychosis, you kind of moving, you you are no longer in touch with. We can talk about that in terms of what is madness and what you know what yeah, is reason. Yeah. Um, and I guess that, to a certain extent, for them was a state of no constraints, where. Um, in a state of psychosis, you're creating your own reality. So what, I mean, what is the purest form of own reality? Um, there may have been a glitch on the line there. So I think you, you, we got to purest form and you paused for about two seconds. You okay, said, so the purest form, yeah. So psychosis as the sort of purest form of creativity. Yeah. Because yeah. you're creating your own reality. They've, um, got, they've got, like you were saying, this kind of, the way they idealize the idea of schizophrenia or the schizophrenic is like someone who manages to exist creatively outside the radically outside the order of things right something like yeah. that yeah. yeah so but so radically that they've kind of effaced the order yeah. yeah um and that's why you know they say the schizophrenia therefore will not fit in mm. cannot find a place within the order which happens to be capitalism yeah. in this case for them um can i jump in I with guess, a question oh sorry yeah, go, on. Yeah. Um, no, go on so i was going to say because one of the things you you sort of early early in the conversation you paused and went well there's no other way to say it they idealized this figure and we the students and i talked about you know uh, Deleuze and Guattari and the the schizoanalysis 
and, and we also mentioned Foucault briefly, and we talked about that kind of anti-psychiatry movement as pushing back against the medical model. And the medical model is something that we did spend quite a lot of time talking about in the session. Um, so when you pause and went, well, there's no other way to say it, they idealize it. That to me sounds like you think there are some problems with that, that as much as it can be quite liberating and quite yeah. powerful, there's also yeah, potentially very, some problems. Very, very and you and I have talked about that, haven't we? Yeah, I mean, it's a very, very seductive idea. And it ties into this idea, which you might have mentioned, I know was in your notes about the creative genius, mm. um, which, which we still, you know, we do have that, that yeah. still exists, the idea of the creative genius. Um, and that, you know, to a certain extent, maybe suffering leads to creativity. Um, but the problem is, of course, is, um, well, there are two problems for me it sort of really skirts the real lived experience of mental illness, yeah. which uh, is not particularly pleasant <laughs> for anyone. It's not pleasant for the sufferer nor for uh, people around them. Um, or we would say, I guess, to a certain extent, society, I mean, it's a very problematic thing to say. And, you know, we can go around and around and talk about, um, would that you know would there be a can we can we create a space for uh Ill, that kind of illness or madness or whatever in our society and would that make the experience of it better i have a sense of that the truth is that often the experience is just freaking awful yeah <laughs> lived experience of mental um and that is my first issue with idealizing it yeah. so much the other issue is does art and creativity actually work that way? Um, do we actually want creativity to be entirely free? Isn't the best art uh, somehow anchored in the lived experience that we can all share? Um, and therefore, you know, this sort of extreme liberation um, where you're creating completely your own reality, to what extent is that actually useful as a model yeah. for, for creativity and art? There's, um, there's that quite kind of, I know this is a, a slightly well-worn, like it's a, it's a cliche, but nevertheless, it's a cliche that's been around for a long time and I think still gets invoked. That idea that the artist is almost like the prophet of their age, right? They kind of distill and interpret the world around us, for us. And if, and, I'm not saying that's right, but that is that that notion has had quite a lot of purchase and still does. Yeah. And I suppose if anyone is persuaded by that, then the artist can't be radically detached, can they? They can be kind of at the vanguard. They can be out in front, but they can't be completely, completely. No, detached. exactly. And and I think you know, th at the same time, uh, you know, people are in the sixties around Deleuze and Guattari and around Foucault and Foucault himself, in fact you know, would say how much art is a web of interconnections mm. <laughs> of, you know, with the world. Um, and that's kind of why we appreciate art. And a lot of art is also minute vari variations of things that have been said before. Yeah. Um, and art is very much a connection with other people. And I think one of the most painful things about a lot of mental health uh, issues is that you lose the connection with other people is that you, you you know you this kind of radical other reality means that you're utterly alone because nobody can join you there yeah um and the point about creativity and art is to make connection yeah they're kind of like they're radical they're kind of mad aesthetics sort of stops them really doesn't it from thinking about yeah. suffering and the need yeah. sometimes for therapy you know yeah yeah to eat the need to ease suffering yeah. yeah.